Welcome to the Psychology World Podcast with me, Conor Whiteley, psychology student and international best-selling psychology author of over 30 psychology books, bringing you the latest psychology news, fascinating psychology topics and more each week. If you want to learn more, then please check out conorwhiteley.net forward slash books. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the YouTube video or follow on your favourite podcast app. And here's the show. Hi everyone, I'm going to episode 231 of the Psychology World Podcast with me, Con Wiley. And today's episode is on How to Maintain Mental Health for University Students. So this podcast episode was sort of like thrown together at the last minute to like some extent because I've had so many different blog post ideas. I've got so many different podcast episodes that I want to do that I didn't really manage to write all of them up because what I really wanted to do this week was something to do with fantasy and magic because of a Kickstarter. I'm actually launching that this week. But sadly, there's basically no psychology research on sort of like beliefs in like magic so I'm gonna have to dig a bit deeper but I do want to do it at some point. I might even try and look up some paranormal psychology bits because every so often I do sort of see uh, stuff like that. So it is the 30th of September 2023 as I record this and this is a really uh, useful uh, podcast episode not just for psychology students but everyone in general. So moving on to the psychology news section, we're reading from the British Psychological Society Research Digest. And speaking of um, paranormal bits, the first one is rather good. Nightmares from terror to treatments. Dreams have long been a a source of fascination for poets, psychoanalysts and philosophers alike, all planting their contents for artistic inspiration or insight. Psychologists are no exception to the rule, with dreams being the focus of a number of psychological research studies. Yet nightmares somehow escape the level of interest given to the more pleasant counterparts, according to the Oxford-based authors of a new study published in Clinical Psychology Review. Nightmares are, open quote, rarely assessed in patients attending psychiatric services and almost never directly treated, close quote. Despite their link with many mental health disorders, in their systemic review, the team egg explores whether manipulating nightmares cause changes in psychiatric symptoms, and whether the presence of severity predicts later mental health troubles. Yep, and then I, the only paragraph that I will read from the actual article on the BPS website is... Many of the studies in included suggest that not only can treatments for distressing psychiatric symptoms reduce nightmares, but the inverse is also true, opening a potentially powerful avenue for mental health workers and researchers looking to find interventions. The person, I think that's really interesting and really weird because of nightmares. Like, I've never really had many, like, nightmares but also though like i think that the concept of uh, dreams or nightmares of being in like in those mental health conditions and mental health difficulties is, is a very interesting take especially when you start focusing on the other theories of the dreams and i i know there's one theory which basically says that um all that dreams are um, of electrical signals again uh, black in the brain and it's basically just us trying to create like meaning dreams actually don't mean anything and it's just us as um, a human being trying like to give up meaning to something that actually doesn't have any meaning so when you take it from that theory it's an interesting idea because what's the point of studying nightmares and dreams but then you've also got all the other theories about dreams and nightmares so it's an interesting idea and I think that if we take the position that nightmares do mean something, then I think the psychodynamic people are going to have like a great time because that's really like um, one of the areas that they focus on. 
So I think it's interesting. I definitely don't think it's going to work um, for everyone. I think nightmares are a human behaviour. And of course in psychology we've got to focus or at least try and understand all human behaviours. So hopefully in the future that will receive a bit more research attention. So the second one is embodying an invisible face makes us feel truly unseen. From Plato to Tolkien, writers have been long fascinated by the idea of becoming invisible. The ideas about how it might affect a person's feelings and behaviours were, of course, necessarily speculative. Recently though, psychologists have been working to close the gap between fiction and reality. Marino L. Angelo at the University of Barcelona and Birkbeck London and their colleagues have developed a technique that makes people feel that their face has become invisible. In a paper in the Journal of Experimental Psychology General, they report that, as with a previously whole body research, the illusions seem to succeed in making the person feel less visible and so less exposed to other people's attention. Okay, so that's really interesting, and it's always great to see the new research as techniques that, well, that we've actually come out with. And I think this is like quite a cool study, because in visibility, I think it's fun, quite a novel concept, and I think if you look at the face of it, there is absolutely no real applications, because we will not become invisible until we like get to the far far future where i think maybe you might be able to do some sort of like invisibility suit with like creating tons of like micro cameras okay yeah but, like cameras there because that's the only plausible invisibility thing that i can actually see like see, yeah but, like see that like, happening i know that was only one of the james bond films i think it's um I don't think it's Tomorrow Will Never Die, but I think it's like one of those films that with like Piers O'Bonts in him. Yeah, so like that's like realistic in this ability. But then I don't think you can argue that this study will be great for future researchers because by the time we get to in this ability suits and other stuff, I think that research would have advanced so much that this would basically be seen as like useless. For example, how we see studies from the 50s or 60s like nowadays, like they're good, but we can sort of do better if you guys get what I mean. So on the surface, this study isn't actually like that great, but if we start to look deeper, then this is a really useful study to actually make us understand how human perception works and how us knowing that we're being paid attention to actually impacts our behaviour. So this is quite a good study, so I just think it's interesting. And the final one is, elsewhere on the web, a glimpse at death. My question, Science Alert, reports on the Aware 2 study, which looked at patients' EEG readings and cerebral oxygen levels during CPR. They find that the brain can maintain some activity for a surprising length of time after cardiac activity ceased, and that the degree of awareness may be maintained despite being patients, despite patients being unresponsive. How could this relate to near-death egg experiences is unclear, but even so, these investigations offer some, some insight into the mysterious egg experience of death and are worth a read. And I guess this actually connects more to paranormal like psychology, other sort of like near-death like experiences though, because I understand the point that people make about, so when you are technically dying, like when you've had cardiac arrest, and when you've basically dead, so your heart stopped, then I think that it is a very logical question about what actually happens to you if you're then brought back to life. Like, what happens in that gap between the time that you die and the time you um, and the time that you're brought back? Granted, I think there are some. Granted, I think so many people have the more fantasy though, like 
I don't know, like, you go to heaven, you go to wherever, whatever you believe in. So I think it'd be interesting. So I think research is always interesting in that sort of stuff. But again, it's all so subjective because, yeah, because, uh, yeah, because you can only trust the person who's actually just, like, come back to life. And let's face it, they're going to be pretty stressed out that they just died. And I think that because the idea of heaven or whatever else you believe in is so embedded in our culture, I think that's what you just like fall back on. Because if you want to, uh, uh, yeah, because if someone's talking to you and they're really passionate about this idea that something happened to you, I mean, part of you is not going to want to disappoint them, mainly because you want them to go away. So you just want to tell them what they want to hear. But also they're like, and also, the person might not have the vocabulary to actually describe like what's happened to them, so they might fall back on the idea of like heaven, hell, or that sort of like idea. Idea. So, I think it's very subjective. I think it's. I think it's interesting. Like whatever happens, and no matter the quality of the research, but I think the aware to study, I might give a little read of uh, at some point. So I hope you enjoy the psychology news section. So let's move on to the person update. So moving on to the person update. So this week was my first full week back at university for my clinical psychology masters. <laughs> and well, I can definitely say that it's an interesting experience of being at back at university. Because I'm definitely glad to be back. It's really nice to be back in like psychology environments, but I definitely know that I still need to find my place in psychology because there are so many intense and really passionate people, which is great, and I'm really pleased to be around other passionate people. But it's their intensity, and it's uh, all they want to talk about is their degree, and it's like I want to talk about anything else but my degree. Because I already live and breathe the psychology enough, like with the podcast, with books, with my own research. I want to talk about other stuff with other people. <laughs> so that's quite interesting. Plus, I really wish that someone would have told me that during, that during my master's, I would have to do basically five hours of, of statistics a week. So three hours with a lecture. Apparently, there's like an hour lunch break. And then a two hour assistant. A two hour statistics workshop so i definitely need to um prepare myself like for that but it should be fine but if there are any lecturers listening to this i've got a massive tip tip like for you though so if you're in a lecture if you're in the first ever lecture and you're and you're giving this a great introductory talk do not invalidate it by talking about something else that's the future because what happened was I was in my statistics lecture. They would, yes, then like the man was talking about how great statistics was, and he was getting us interested in the module. And then he turned around and said, But in a few years, you guys won't need to know this because artificial intelligence will do it all for you, and artificial intelligence will actually do um, so much more than statistics. You'll be able to do a lot more modelling and tons of other stuff. And universities aren't really looking for statistics like these days. They're looking for um, computer programming skills. Uh, skills though, because that's why I got the job. Because yes, I've actually got my statistics knowledge, but um, but the university wants someone who has egg experience in artificial intelligence and computer programming. Do not say something like that, because now I'm just like, I don't really know what the point is of, of statistics and why the university isn't teaching us the skills that they clearly want and other job roles clearly want. So I did have a massive I rant about that to some family members because, yeah, because they were the first people that I saw after the lecture. <laughs> so, yeah, so that was quite interesting. So just don't invalidate the entire point of your module. That's my massive tip. So yes, there will have to be a minor attitude adjustment when it comes to statistics like next week. But in terms of other like in like trusting stuff, 
next week's going to be really, really busy, like, but I'm really am uh, looking forward to because I've got my normal uh, lectures, I've got tons of different uh, meetings about tons of uh, different stuff over because I'm helping like, an old friend of my like, mum with their kind of trope group again, which is basically kind of continuing on with my final year projects because that was like a lot of fun. And I do like interacting with first years. First years are really fun, they're really interesting, and you basically just like to see like what they're like. And then I've also got a like meeting about a like researcher proposal that I submitted um, to a like supervisor, which I'm so excited about. So hopefully we're going to talk about it more. Hopefully she's like, yes, I think you can do this like with me. And then we're going to go through the whole like research a bit though, because I just really want to do something I'm passionate about for my master's um, dissertation. Simply because if I'm going to be researching something for 10 months, or basically 9 to be honest, I really want to do something that I'm actually going to enjoy, and something I'm actually going to be quite passionate about. So that's going to be a lot of fun, and I definitely talk about it near the time or when it's actually, um, and basically like what we're doing like, with that, because I think that's going to be quite useful for, for quite a lot of students that actually wants to go in uh, to research. Or I'm thinking that you actually want to submit your own master's like dissertation proposal. Well, I mean, instead of like choosing one, that's actually like given to you by the university. And as always, I always love to hear your thoughts and feelings on today's episode. So you can always email me, connorwiley, connorwiley.net. You can always leave comments at the show notes at connorwiley.net forward slash podcast. And you can always tweet me on Twitter at sci Wiley. Or get a comment on the Facebook post at Connor Wiley, Psychology Author. And today's episode has been sponsored by the brand new book, University Mental Health and Mindset. So this is actually a really good book that I'm really quite passionate about. Because as you can only imagine though, like as a university psychology student, if you want to do well, then you've got to have, well, you've got to have like what I'm calling like the university mindset, which is a like good focus on like learning the social side and tons of other really good like mindset bits though, because I imagine that all, that all of us have seen the like the differences in how what good university students and how <laughs> not so much bad, but the people that don't do as well with like university like they tend to like think differently, they tend to act differently, and uh, they tend to have different like focuses that were. So if you want to know about like a good like, university mindset, in it, including like lots of like helpful tips about how to improve your mindset, uh, and uh, lots of other like great stuff, uh, then uh, definitely like check out this uh, book. So that's the mindset part of it. But another bit is the mental health aspect because university can be a very like stressful time. And I know that quite a lot of like um, university students that can actually suffer mental health difficulties. So, but this is quite easy uh, to understand book actually contains a lot of like different pieces of information. Now that helps you to like, focus on like, your own like, mental health and maintain it. Just you hopefully don't have any mental health difficulties during like your university time. So that's university mental health and the mindset. So, Available for all major ebook retailers, and you can get the paperback and the hardback version from Amazon, the local bookstore, or local library if you request it. And you can buy the ebook directly from me at payhip.com forward slash con Wiley. So, but whilst buying books helps to support the creation and the editing of the podcast, my time is sponsored by my wonderful patrons. And as always, an absolute massive thank you to my patrons because. Your support shows so that you like the show and that you want it to continue. So if you wanted to become a patron and to get tons of like great rewards, then you can now become a patron at patreon.com forward slash the psychology world podcast. So that's enough for the personality, let's move on to the content part of today's episode. So I'm moving on to the content part of today's episode. So we're gonna be talking talking about how to maintain mental health for university students. So this is really in, in important, especially because the life has a really taught me the in important life of this. So I'm going to be reading you a, a like chapter from the book, and I hope you enjoy it. 
I live like this in mid-2022. It is Mental Health Awareness Month. And because I normally write uh, so much about mental health on my podcast and in my books, it can be very hard to remember what I have and I have not mentioned on this blog group. So I uh, wanted to create a, a post where all the information was in one place. So if you're a university student wanting to protect and maintain your mental health, then this is a great post for you. Why is mental health important for university students? To put it simply, when students come to university and are studying throughout their degree, they will be placed in a very difficult environment. For example, you might have moved away from home for the first time. You might not have any friends at your university. You might struggle to keep up with your degree demands and so on. In including you might be struggling with imposter syndrome. All of these factors might be liberating and interesting for some. Personally, moving away from home was not a like, big deal for me because I've always been highly independent. But it was still great to go home and see the family throughout the year. However, for some people, but these might be factors that you will struggle with. For, for instance, moving away from home for the first time that can be a, a very scary thing to do, and you might feel lonely. That's why mental health is important to look at. So well, whatever you face, you, you can be somewhat prepared with how to deal with it. But most mental health related topics, like other ones in this poster, focus on a different angle. They focus on, on preventative measures. How to protect your mental health. Whilst different facets of the next few sections would have been mentioned in other posts, these will, these will focus on these topics from the mental health viewpoint. As well as that the last section is a must read because it's very interesting. Work-life balance. This almost goes up without saying uh, these days, but considering May is not only m uh, Mental Health Awareness Month, but also the start of a Gazam season, this is even more in you know, Portland because you need to remember to study with eyes, but socialise too. As a result, if you don't socialise or take a break, you will burn out, hate your studying, and you will only harm yourself for the long term, as well as you will hardly do you, your mental health any favours, but at creating all these psychological de-stress for yourself. Therefore, please have a member to a study, but make sure you, that you have a break so too. Make sure you go out with friends, watch a film, or just do something that is not university related. However, when it comes to mental health, making sure that you prevent a meltdown, I need to stress some more, you will need to uh, take your work-life balance seriously. And please know uh, that doing all these uh, all-nighters does not make you a good student. Sure, it might make you feel like one, but it won't do you any good. Just bear that in mind. Socialising and combating loneliness. I'm pretty sure that there is a loneliness blog post coming in at the next few weeks. But university can be a, a very lonely time for people, especially people who don't want to go to clubs, bars and do the whole drinking side of university. As well as making friends it can be difficult for people too, as there isn't a very well set way to, um, to meet people and actually engage with them due to with all university students here. And we can all be a member times when we just wanted to go to the lecture theatre, barely talk to anyone, and then we left. Also, like, stepping out of the, like, blog post here, um, I've actually got a really, like, funny story, though, like, this week, so I've been trying to be, like, a bit more social, everyone. So in my statistics, like, lecture, I was sitting, like, next to someone, and this person was just as interested and, like, in the, in the statistics lecture as me so we weren't that interested so in uh, the break i turned to him and i made the comments like um i don't know like how bad is this or just something along like, like those lines i thought i was actually quite funny because and so did he because he smiled and and then he got up 
walked away just so he didn't have to keep talking like to me because he also made quite a dismissive comment. And it was just like, how rude. And I mean, like, you try to be social to these people and then they just like walk away. So rude. So, yeah, so um, I definitely understand the why I just don't talk to people in like my lectures because psychology people are really hard to get on with, I find. I at times. <laughs> so we're going back to the blog post. For people who struggle to make friends, as it is, this hardly helps. Resulting in an increase of risk of loneliness and all the mental health difficulties that it creates for people. Thankfully, because of how universities are set up, at least in the UK, there is a wide range of set ways to help fix this problem. The most obvious being that people should try to engage and talk more with their fellow students with their fellow students on their course. And I know that this is hardly you'll be surprised by where some of the conversations can lead you. Also, it's a good thing that the UK universities have a societies, so just mean like um, social clubs formed around a uh, particular activity, so you can always find like-minded people who are in to the same things as you. I've met tons of uh, great people throughout uh, through, uh, different societies. The only slightly negative thing uh, that I will say is that you need to be uh, like, aware of is that some universities do not update their society listings to uh, get rid of the ones that are closed because I was a little disappointed when I started university because there were plenty of amazing sounding societies but they were closed. Thankfully, that's not a problem this year because I did like look it up. Equally, there were some great ones that are open, filled with great people, and you would definitely feel less lonely after going to a society of them. Reading. With my podcast I've been as a psychology focus, mental health does pop up quite often. Often, there were because to be honest is what I enjoy it's what you guys didn't enjoy and and I think it's just helpful so I wanted to share two posts with you from the early days of the podcast and considering I wrote this back in 2022 this is even earlier now <laughs> so as a result whilst I'm surprised that I haven't actually covered stress on the podcast since 2020 and I still think that that's true um, there was one a podcast episode that di- that discussed a, a brand new study at the time and that focused on the most a, effective stress, I believe, was reading. Reading. And then, like, another post was uh, new ways to deal with uh, stress because that was, say, like, another post. So, as a frequent reader who always has a scary big reading pile and that has not changed... I can testify to the powerful, relaxing nature of a reading because the problem with a modern English, in right, English teaching in schools is that it does kill a lot of people's enjoyment for, for reading because people think they have to analyse everything they read, which is no, it's just it's just not true, and there is nothing better than enjoying a great book by some great authors. A book that can uh, transport you to another gripping world with uh, lovable characters, endings that are just perfect, and leave you wanting more. And if any of you are in, uh, interested in like, my, my fiction books, then you can uh, check out them as at conorwhiteyfiction.com. As we're on the uh, topic of uh, mental health, uh, reading makes a perfect sense of why it would be relax him and uh, protect mental health due to the entire point of a commercial and genre fiction is as to be escapist and uh, given how your real life can uh, be what's uh, causing you uh, stress reading is the perfect way to uh, escape your real life for a few hours therefore i uh, cannot recommend uh, reading enough to uh, maintain uh, your mental health and uh, with it being like uh, summer soon or autumn <laughs> nowadays 
if they're your friends and family are busy and that you like have a garden, then reading in the garden for a bit is is very relaxing. Yeah, because like last month for when well for when my parents were like away yeah, on like holiday, I like fed in I like fed in the garden for about forty minutes, like um every day. But on the Friday because I was sitting in a bad like position um, and I read for like an hour and ten minutes because I was like finishing like a like book off I had a slight like bad back after that so just like be careful make sure you, just make sure that like your posture's good <laughs> conclusion as I mentioned before mental health is something to take seriously but you can really in Improve it if you were simply take a, like a few steps and adopt them in your lifestyle. Make sure you maintain a good work-life balance. You socialize and combat learning loneliness, and it never hurts to read. If you start adopting some of these tips now, you might be able to avoid a lot of distress down down the road. And isn't that what we want? So I really hope that you enjoyed today's episode and you got something out of it. Personally, even though this was a like chapter taken out of like a book that I wrote uh, like a little while a little while ago and so like it just had been like published. Uh, yeah, but like published. So I think this is a very timely topic. Not only because my own breakdown over the summer, but mental health is really in up on, especially for university students students though and also in like the book I also talk about a lot of like different like other facets like how do you find mental health support and I think that even though it's like a year old I still think that a lot of it basically all of it still like stands up uh, you know like so this is really in like important and the loneliness aspect definitely hits me because um Mainly because I'm trying so hard to actually get more like of a social life because I'm actually going out like this afternoon again, and I mean having a social life it definitely makes you appreciate how busy like you actually are. But it's a great and after so long not having a social life, not really having friends that I can just like go out with, it's really nice though. So yeah, so like in terms of my own mental health, I still know that I'm that I'm fragile at times. Like I always have like something bad happen at least like once a week but but it's like a process it's recovery it might take like it's a bit of a of like time though but you do get better better though and that's why i like focusing on these more simple podcast episodes from like time to time which is where there's more like a practical steps though because there was a lot of like good advice of course none of it's official but if you can prevent having like a mental breakdown <laughs> in the first place, then that's absolutely brilliant. Okay, um, so we're just list like food for thought. So if you know someone who would enjoy today's episode, then please share it with them. I'm always really grateful when you wonderful people help spread the word about the podcast. And definitely check out University Mental Health and Mindset. It's a great book, uh, available in all the usual places. And if you want to become a, a patron of the show, then definitely check out patreon.com forward slash the psychology world podcast. And also by speaking of like reading, if any of you are interested in uh, some like a group like fantasy books and other like a fantasy a fiction, then definitely check out Rise to Power, which which is actually launching on Kickstarter, so which is a like crowdfunding platform. And you can I get like tons of like great books, great merchandise, and tons of like a great like things. So link should be in the product description below that because I'm hoping to launch it um tomorrow when this a podcast like goes out. But I'm waiting for Kickstarter to a uh, approve it though. So really excited. It's like going to be like a great project. It's a lot of fun. So have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening today. I hope you found it helpful. Please have remember to like the video and subscribe to the, the YouTube channel and follow the podcast on your favourite podcast app. And if you wanted to learn more, then please check out the backlist 
of the podcast episodes or my books at conwhiteley.net. So have a great day and I'll see you next time.